My name is Cheyenne Tessier, and I'm the founder of The Rooftop Tea Company. We are creating an alternative supply chain for the premium organic tea. For our women growers in developing countries, we offer economic opportunities they otherwise wouldn't have access to because their family responsibilities require them to stay at home. We do so by setting up tea farms on the women's own rooftops. For our US customers, we offer a new blend of tea that actually links them back to the grower and their values. I remember the first time I saw a rooftop garden when I was living in Cairo. The company I was working for had sent me to pick some of the basil that was grown by the woman who lived in the building below. This garden, as we can see up here, like many others in the community, was being used to grow vegetables for these women and their families or to sell in the street. As I worked more and more with these gardens, I realized that they weren't necessarily very profitable, but they were successful because the women only had to work one hour a day in the garden. Working with this organization made me wonder if we could make this very valuable thing even more valuable. And so it hit me. Why don't we grow a premium good and maximize profits to these growers? My friends and I drove around Cairo collecting scrap wood, and we built the first rooftop tea company last summer. It's a 10 by 20 structure filled with thriving um, chamomile and hibiscus. After receiving widespread community support for this measure and our first prototype, we launched the Rooftop Tea Company. The tea industry it stands is plagued by the denial of human rights abuses and human rights. Workers make just $1 a day for work hours of 60 or more per week. The tea industry has received a lot of media attention lately for being one of the primary drivers of child slavery and of indentured servitude. Nonetheless, this isn't even an uncommon practice among fair trade and ethically sourced labeling. What we see as a result are shelves filled with teas that are marketed for health benefits or for flavors, but companies that actually can't reveal their sourcing models. How are we different? We create a model that keeps investment in communities. For our women tea growers, we offer above average market wages for non-arduous work. It's proven over and over again that when companies invest in women wages, these women will reinvest in services that break the cycle of poverty, such as education and healthcare for their children. And for our US drinkers, we provide a product that gets rid of all of the mystery around ethical sourcing and among how much growers actually make. In other words, we're creating a model that's more fair than fair trade. Meet Fatima. Fatima lives in our first sourcing city, which is Cairo. Like many other women in her community, she finds herself busy taking care of her three children inside the home. She's married to Khalid. He's a bricklayer, and he makes enough money to pay for their rent and essentials like rice. Fatima, however, often finds herself sitting on her rooftop, wondering if there's some kind of opportunity she can use to better support her family. Now meet Liz. Liz is a tea drinker. As a young urban professional, she finds chamomile as the best end of the day escape. She's also a conscious consumer, and oftentimes at Whole Foods, she finds herself reading the back of the label, wondering which tea actually fits her values the best. The Rooftop Tea Company has the incredible opportunity to connect these two women through our storytelling, which is why our value proposition lies in our unique ability to create with each sip a narrative that tells the story of the women, the culture, and the community that came together to brew each blend. We're using this value proposition in strategic marketing by offering a story on each package of one of our growers. In addition, on each sachet, there will be a tracking number. This tracking number will allow the customer to go to our website and read the story of the individual grower who actually grew their blend. Additionally, they'll be able to share this story on social media and they'll be able to receive discounts for every one of their friends that purchases our tea. This is our competitive landscape. As you can see, the Rooftop Tea Company competes with brands like Mighty Leaf and Capital Teas. 
In terms of quality, we are offering an organic blend that represents the cultural palette of our growers. And in terms of narrative, our alternative supply chain is creating a model that cannot be matched by our competitors. Meet our team. I'm Cheyenne, the founder and an avid tea drinker. I study at the George Washington University, majoring in Middle East Studies and Business Administration. I've received national awards by Womenetics in social entrepreneurship and have done two years internationally studying these models. I also work for the Qatar Foundation. Samira El Hassari is our head of communications and she will handle our brand messaging that will appear on our packaging, social media, and our website. She currently works for Ishker as the head of marketing and she's been featured in Bustle and The Economist. Mallory Dudra is our head of operations. She'll handle the day-to-day -day facilitation between our field office and our home office. And she currently works for the National Council on U.S. Air Relations. Our mentors are also pretty diverse. Khan is an angel investor in Cairo and sole founder of Rise Up Egypt. Seise is vice president of Ruckus, which is a major marketing firm in New York City. And Jennifer is executive of Hands, is the executive director of Hands, which is the primary recipient of USAID in Egypt. In six months, our team has created some traction. We've done 38 customer interviews and 23 retailer interviews. Also, we are sending one of our team members this summer to scout our second sourcing location. Additionally, in less than 12 hours, our website saw over 400 views and 45 attempts to buy our tea. We've also launched two prototype blends, a prototype garden, and we've created models for garden layout and yield. We also have four partners that are ready to be contracted on the ground. This is what our supply chain looks like, and I'll explain more as I move through our key partners. Our community outreach coordinator will be a trusted woman in the community. She'll be hired from our pre-existing networks of co-ops, and her main responsibility will be to canvas the community, run the application process, and assure that these women have access to their rooftops. We know a number of women in the community that are fit for this role and ready to be hired. Our building partner is Shadoof. Shadoof will build and install our model for less than $2 per square foot. This is a company with a proven track record for building low-cost, high-efficiency rooftop gardens. They have agreed to be our key partner. Our farming partner will facilitate training and match our growers with mentors. Their name is Barsama, and they will teach our female growers about um, how to foresee problems in the crop, such as pests or bad soil conditions. Our packaging partner is APE. They're a pre-existing women co-op in our target community. They will take our dried and sorted teas and pack them in biodegradable packaging that can actually be planted by our growers. And most importantly, our field office director will tie all these pieces together by handling the operational partners and facilitating this and also assuring that production is on track so we have a product to deliver. I'd like to introduce you to our first two Cairo blends. Two blends will also be added per additional sourcing city. Right now, you are trying our Souk Masri, which is a dried citrus, hibiscus, Egyptian mint, and lemongrass. I hope you enjoy it. Um, these, these teas have actually been based off teas that have been grown in Egypt for centuries. And these two iterations have gone through two taste testings to get where they are today. The tea industry is doing really well. The premium price bag tea industry saw $1.82 billion in sales last year and is the largest market se segment within the larger tea industry. Furthermore, the organic and natural industries saw impressive compound annual growth rates of 11.2% over the last few years. When we asked our target customer, they said they'd pay over 50% more for a product if it supported female empowerment and over 50% more for a product if it was organic. Which is why when we talked to our retailers and 23 retailers, they said they'd be very interested in offering, a supply, in offering a sales run because they believe that our product would be of value to their customers. We'll also offer direct sales through our website and through Amazon. For each package we sell, of the $8 package cost, $2 will go back to our, our women growers and $150 will be kept in profits. 
$4 will be an operational and production cost. Although this seems high, this is actually one of our key values because we're keeping most of this cost in investment for the community. When looking at our summarized performa, you can see that our operational earnings increase respectably until we break even in year four. We're, we're asking for $100,000 investment total for year one, two, and three of operational costs. This means that by year three, we will serve 100 women and two companies and see 18,000 18, customers. I've already invested 7,500 of my own money into this venture in SGNA, and with your investment, we could roll out operations this summer, and we could launch by January 2017. How far would $25,000 go? Far. With $25,000, we could roll out our first round of operations and production. We could create 1,000 units of package, um, of package tea, and we could sell them on our crowdfunding campaign to actually double your investment to get us halfway to our investment goal. In sum, the Rooftop Tea Company is creating an alternative supply chain for premium organic teas. We benefit women in developing countries by providing economic opportunities and benefit our customers by providing these stories and ethically sourced teas that buy into their values. I'm Cheyenne, I'm ready, I'm dedicated to launching this company, and with your investment, I will be able to do so. Thank you. Um, have you thought at all about doing this um, in the US with women who are low income and providing them opportunities? Yeah, we have thought a little bit about that. Um, we've seen the impact though abroad and we know that the impact for what the wages are is so much more. For example, a woman will make $41 per month of the growing season, which is nine months. So overall, she'll be making 70% of the average male wage in her community um, for nine months of work at one hour per day, which is really impressive because um, this wouldn't go as far in the United States so we see much more improved impact. As a, as a tea drinker, can you tell us, as an audience, some of the benefits of drinking tea? Sure. <laughs> How long do you got? Sure, uh, yeah. I think, I think the best benefit of drinking tea is that everyone can buy into it. You know, every cup of tea is a story, whether you use it for health benefits or whether you use it for your kids who you don't want drinking sugary substances like juice. Um, there are a number of health benefits to different teas that we won't go into, but um, I drink tea every day, multiple times a day, and I'm pretty healthy, so hopefully that counts. <laughs> so two, two questions. How easy is it to set up the rooftop garden? And then how much does one produce? And I apologize if you sure. mentioned that. So we actually have these yield models. I'll leave up our second one, and, or our first one, and then I'll switch to our second. Mm -hmm. So it costs $400 to set up a 26 by 26 foot square um, rooftop garden. And that's why we're working with our operational partners mm -hmm. who can make this for um, less than $2 per square foot, including the cost of the seedlings and the fertilizer and everything, installation. And this company is already making vegetable gardens on rooftops in Cairo, so they know how to do it. They have a proven track record. Um, we're just going to pay them to do it for us. That's great. Obviously, rooftop gardening is already happening sure. in, in Cairo. How does, how does the profitability of this sure. model compete with what they're raising up there now? Sure. So what they're raising up there now is about, well, Factoring in how much it costs to actually grow, their profitability is actually about 25 cents a day, and we're going to increase that to over $1.25. What are the climate conditions for growing tea? Sure. So depending on our source location, we can talk about Cairo, which has two growing, um, two growing seasons of two to three months. So we're actually not taking tea plants and importing them to a different country. We're taking blends that have been created from all native plants to Egypt. So these are plants that already grow in these conditions and have been grown for hundreds of years. The expertise is there, um, the plants are there. We're not importing anything from abroad. And the, uh, the blend you tasted today was made from 100% local ingredients. What year are you in school? I'm a junior, so I've taken two years off. Um, okay. 
to study so internationally. So you're 100% on this project? I'm 100% on this project, okay. um, along with school. And <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 so is, little, what do you do in your spare time? Yeah. <laughs> Drink tea. Drink tea. Pet, Drink tea. pet puppies and, Drink tea. and all, yeah. the, all the good yeah. things. I'm 100% on this project, and after graduation, I'll be full time. OK. Excellent. So when somebody comes up to you with a ton of money today, would you, would you do it? I would absolutely do it. And we're going to do it. Cool. You did not uh, quote when you, you told us how much you needed. Mm -hmm. You did not tell us what return someone would get in making an investment like that into your company. Sure. So right now, we're actually um, not offering equity investment. As it stands, um, we entered this business plan competition because we believe we want to launch this model and run our first um, operational season before we actually ask for equity investment. Is that your question? Yes. Okay, great. So you're looking for a donation? For now. <laughs> Let's talk in a year. <laughs> a, wonder, a wonderful con concept to have a real impact on people's lives. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, question, you talked about rolling out into other source cities. Mm -hmm. What are the characteristics of a ideal source city? How do you go about identifying what the right next city is going to be? Sure. So the fantastic thing is that most places in the world have plants that can be created into some kind of tea blend and are being created into some kind of tea blend. So really the ideal, um, the ideal characteristic of a source location is that we have um, low income areas or at risk areas um, and we use these underserved areas to grow tea by having flat rooftops. So that's another characteristic. But this isn't, this isn't necessarily specific to Cairo. And furthermore, to answer your question, we've created an equation that if our community impact, so if our community spending falls below 35% of our operations, we're going to not consider that city. So at Cairo, it's about 50%. But if this um, community spending falls below 35% of our costs, we're not going to consider it because we think it's um, just taking away from our key values. A great, great product. And Thank a you. Great idea, and love your passion. Thank you. Uh, have you tried uh, crowdfunding? Are you looking at crowdfunding? Yeah. So we're waiting to crowdfund until we actually launch our first operational run, because we want to offer these people that invest in us a product that they can actually have as a result of crowdfunding. So we're actually waiting to create um, a, the blend from the beginning to the end of the prototype. We've prototyped every single every single part of the supply chain, but we want a blend that follows this supply chain all along, where we can pay the women, contract with these partners, um, put that much investment into the community, and then offer our crowdfunding partners um, the package of our tea in exchange for funding us. We'll also be offering on our crowdfunding platform, in case you're curious, a way for more generous donors to actually sponsor a, a rooftop and create the whole garden for $400. Sure. Um, Egypt's a long way away. Egypt is a long way and away. And obviously you've, you're studying Middle Eastern studies. Sure. Is there anything prohibitive about doing the same model in South America or Mexico? Actually, South America we're looking at is number three mm -hmm. um, after India, and we're really excited about that because we feel like it offers um, just diverse blends yeah. that are also trending right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. My CEO waited three years for a tiny little 3D printing machine off of Kickstarter, so you could probably launch now. Thank don't you. Wait forever. Wait three years. Don't wait forever. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully we don't make people wait that long. <laughs> Just give them a really good picture. Yeah, I hope so too. You said January? January 2017. Okay. Cool. Make sure you let all five of us know we'd like yes. to know. Fantastic. Fantastic. Given that, your mission, have you thought about being a nonprofit? We're not thinking about being a nonprofit because as an entrepreneur, I believe the future lies in social entrepreneurship for profit. And this is because we don't have to ask for donations. We're creating a model that actually creates its own revenue and creates its own profit so we can continue. And that's really a beautiful thing if you think about it. Yeah. Very good. Any other questions? As you expand supply sure. around the world, you have to create demand. How are you, what are your plans to create? consumer awareness of this great offering? Sure. So we have really a two-fold platform. Our first is partnering with retailers before we, act retailers before we actually 
um, produce, which means that um, the product will be offered in resale locations and will be visible to the eye. And our product is actually packaged in, again, I think you passed around the paper, um, biodegradable plantable packaging, which sets us apart on the shelf because people see it and they automatically know we're different. Um, with that, we're offering, we, our tracking system is really interesting because the customer can actually go and find out who their grower is. And then with this, they share it on social media. And for every 10 people that buy tea, they receive a discount as well. And the people that buy tea from them receive a discount. So we're really creating a storytelling around this community awareness. And we're also creating a system for people to get discounts by telling these women's stories. Have you explored, um, so like a junior league for instance, everybody puts their heads together and their dollars together and they could buy a plant or a farm for another group of women. Have you thought yeah. about that? That's really interesting. We definitely haven't thought about that yet, mm -hmm. but I would that consider you that a, a lot in the future. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd love to talk yeah. to you after about that okay. more. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you.